Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new edition of The Passionate Photographer Critique with me, Steve Simon, the passionate photographer, like you are, I am sure. Uh, unfortunately, today, another passionate photographer, uh, Derek, he's sick. He's feeling under the weather. Weather. I was just talking with Danny. He needs a couple of days to get back uh, to, to normal. It's going around. I know my son, I was mentioning to Danny, has strep throat, which is is no fun, although he's he's on the mend. And, you know, I hope you guys are doing well and uh, staying healthy and, and well so we could uh, appreciate uh, the photographs that we're going to see here today. Um, so I'll, I'll get into it. And just before I do, um, I always like to give you uh, a little bit of a uh, a pearl of wisdom that I've uh, collected uh, over the many, many years that I've been a passionate photographer. And one of the things that um, I can't kind of underestimate is the idea of sort of simplifying things. And by that, I mean, you know, you can apply it uh, to, you know, the less is more idea. You can apply it to so many aspects of photography. We're going to talk about it here today when we look at photos, because sometimes you know, we tend to include too much in the photo and maybe it could be stronger with a crop or with, you know, something a little more simple. Uh, but when it comes to shooting specifically, particularly if you're photographing a world that's kind of out of your control, and let's face it, the world is pretty much out of our control. Um, but it's a little bit different when you're, you know, working in your studio or doing macro work or planting your tripod legs into the ground and photographing a landscape, which, you know, things are happening, but it's not quite like documenting life when you're traveling or on the street or sports or action. And I have found that simplifying my system um, has, has made things so much easier and better so that I can really concentrate on, on what's truly important when we're out there taking pictures. And that is kind of finding the right angle, setting the right settings, um, you know, shooting at the right moment, composing in the best possible way. Uh, and I find that when I'm out there, you know, doing my street photography, for example, I tend to work in aperture priority. I start wide open because that's often where I end. I like to be able to focus on something and that something is sharp. Everything else is a little bit not as sharp which means the viewer of the image is going to go to what I want them to go to oftentimes, and that will be the sharpest part of the picture. I can always add depth of field. And then here's the other critical part of my simplification in the field, and that is using auto ISO with a minimum shutter speed. And I tend to default to a minimum shutter speed of 500th of a second because 500th of a second will definitely help me, you know, stop any kind of camera movement, although some so many of the great stabilization uh, technology is in a lot of the cameras that we're using now. But 500th of a second will stop me. It will stop much of what I'm photographing for sharp images. And I think oftentimes it's sharpness that's helping the picture as opposed to hurting it, although as, as much as I love blur, and we're going to maybe see some in some of the... Um, some of the examples that you guys have sent in, please keep sending them in. You're, you're sending some, some great work. Uh, we're sharing, we're inspiring, and we're helping each other. When we look at the work, you know, if there are things that can be made better, we'll talk about it. And that's going to help us when we go out with our camera on our next shoot. So I think, you know, from a simplification idea, that simplify idea, uh, the first few photos um, kind of fall into that territory in that, you know, there's some beautiful work here. And, you know, again, thanks for sending this stuff in. It's inspiring. And when you look at the work, and we're going to look at them sort of one by one, um, you'll see that oftentimes um, the message, the communication is very quick. And and there goes that thousand words idea. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words if it's good, you know, if it's really good, it's it's worth more than that. Uh, but so many of the images that we see are not necessarily communicating anywhere close to a thousand words. But by simplifying that message, I think that that really helps. Um, and these first few images, as you can tell, they're all kind of still lives. Uh, well, ex with the exception of the butterfly and the flower, I guess, is a living thing, but it doesn't move that much. 
And <clears throat> so the photographer has had time uh, to, to compose. Uh, I think what also is a commonality with this group of images is color. And as I've often, as you've heard me say, probably many times in this uh, series, uh, good color amplifies the content. It doesn't get in the way of the message of the photograph and enhances the storytelling of the image. And I think we could safely say, or I would safely say that all these images are amplified by the color and they wouldn't necessarily work uh, as well in black and white. So let's maybe uh, start, I'm just gonna cut them down here so you can see them a little brighter a little bigger, I mean, um, you know, we'll look at uh, these two images. They're similar, right? They're beautiful color. They're very simple scenes, uh, but very, very effective. Um, and you can see there's quite a contrast between the light and the dark. And that also is a very effective way to capture the world because in the dark areas, you know, you're, you're, the, the dark area is essentially a stage for kind of what it is that you're 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 showing off here. And uh, not unlike a stage, which is spotlit, the spotlight is on the flower or on the butterfly and the uh, the plant. and they're they're very effective. You can see here too that just to generalize, you know, both of the main subjects, are not in the center. They're not necessarily at a third. They don't follow uh, specifically the rule of thirds or the guide of thirds, but they're they're definitely a little bit off center, which is a very effective way to you know add emphasis to the main subject. So this first one here, this beautiful butterfly, you know, it's sharp where it needs to be. Um, the darkness provides some room for you to kind of get into and explore the actual butterfly you know the one thing i would say is that you know this leaf and the speed at which the lines of the leaf and the out of focused area of the leaf in the background uh, provide a nice little kind of contrast to the stationary butterfly which has its own patterns similar to the leaf on which it stands but i would say that potentially um, this image could be stronger by toning down uh, some of the tones of the plants which the butterfly is resting on, mainly because, you know, those light areas are pretty bright and they definitely are grabbing our attention when we look at the photo. Are they necessarily distracting from the power of this image and the main subject, which is the butterfly? Not to a huge degree, but I think ultimately it could be better specifically by toning down this area here that I'm kind of, and let me just uh, grab my cursor so you can see it better. But this area here, I think, could be toned down a little bit. And that will just, I think, be the piece de resistance to make this image uh, even stronger. Beautiful. What can you say here? I think really the, um, you know, it, it's sort of like the, the, the Russian doll idea. You've got this dark, interesting environment with uh, texture on the black wall. It almost looks like a coal mine where this flower is. And it's a very beautiful contrast between the dark black and the red of this beautiful flower. And what's nice too is that in this particular image, you can see the texture both on the wall and on the flower. And the fact... <laughs> oh, sorry. Should... Uh bit of a drinking problem, um, <clears throat> swallowing. So when you look at um, <clears throat> the texture, both of the wall and the flower, <clears throat> there are a lot of con there's a lot of contrast between those textures. And I think rather than, for example, having the black texture sort of softened and out of focus, I think it, it provides an effective uh, contrast that makes this image even stronger because those two textures could not be more kind of opposite, as well as the color, you know, the lack there, the lack of color in the neutral black and gray versus the beautiful deep red. And then of course, you've got that third doll within the doll. And that is um, this middle area here of this very 
delicate and fragile. Um, and there's probably a word for what those things are. And I'm far from a botanist, but really beautiful. And, you know, the yellow red combination really works well. Really, there's kind of yellow, red and black. Uh, so again, you know, this whole idea of simplifying that I talked about earlier uh, is very effectively um, at play in this particular image. And, you know, it's beautiful. It really is. I, I, there's nothing I can say um, that would necessarily make it better or uh, critical of it. That's, that's me. Everyone's got their own idea. <laughs> and now we've got more texture, but you know, in these next images, huh. uh, see, I shouldn't try and sneak that coffee. Well, let me just clear my throat here. In these three images, um, the photographer, and it would not completely surprise me if it's the same photographer that took these three, um, mainly because the subject matter is, is very similar. The design elements of the composition are also very similar and very effective. Um, <clears throat> and you can start to see a momentum start to happen when it comes to a set of pictures, when you start to add one picture to another picture to another picture of a similar genre or similar subject, it starts to get even more interesting and that's when, you know, the challenge of sort of putting together uh, the sequencing can be very important to what you show the viewer when you um, look at your images. So there you go. These three are, are very effective. Um, so let's start with this one. Um, I love the texture there. Uh, we do have that leaf and some of the vegetation growing from this old, maybe abandoned car. Uh, as a contrast to kind of the steel and the metal. And I think that works really well. And what I also like and what I noticed is, you know, the shapes and the lines, but I also noticed the shape of the leaf and the shape of the speaker or whatever that insignia is work really well. And you can just see how this um, steel man-made object is starting to decay and become part of the natural landscape as it starts to, you know, have living things grow on it and grow through it and all that kind of stuff. So it's very interesting. Um, this one here is really just an exercise in color and texture. And it's really interesting because you've got sort of the harshness of this area here versus the softness of the purple and the blue on this end and the colors. And you know how, how this kind of matches this a little bit. So again, you've got, you know, the contrast between the leaf and the steel. And in this one, you've got a contrast between this kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This kind of uh, degradation that's starting to happen with the smoothness uh, and the color of this. And even the colors, the blue and the yellow, the warm and the cool uh, really work well together. And this one too, I mean, you've got beautiful light beautiful texture, and you've got, you know, really kind of a beautiful uh, sculpture, if you will. And if you look at kind of the uh, insignias on a lot of cars, particularly some of the old cars, I mean, they don't make them like that so much anymore. They really are fantastic. And, and that's what we're seeing here. You know, we're seeing the whole world reflected in the insignia of this old Oldsmobile. And as much as the world is kind of degrading, as we know, and it's fragile, it's still here and it's still beautiful. And uh, I mean, look, these are sort of generalizations that I'm just riffing off looking at that, at this image, but that's the power of photography as well, right? I mean, when you see an image like this and then to sort of broaden it out to kind of some sort of philosophy, that means that the picture is doing its job. It's communicating something much stronger than the reality of what it is. And, you know, that's part of the magic of photography. So I think it works really well. Um, <clears throat> in contrast uh, to that one, now we're seeing another image um, that also combines some of 
uh, the, the positive things we were talking about in these earlier images. And it's also very beautiful. Um, you know, we talk about f-stop and, and why um, shooting selective focus, and by that I mean wide apertures, is a good idea. Because it brings your eye to the sharpest areas of the frame. So areas like here that are out of focus lead you to where the sharpness is. And, you know, it, it does not disappoint because it's a very beautiful pattern of textures and colors and shapes, and it's all there. And, you know, the steps are kind of the supporting character, if you will, in this image. Um, maybe there's maybe a little too much of the steps, potentially. I don't know if you could, uh, you know, find a way to make this a little stronger. Um, you definitely could, you know, crop it if you didn't keep the aspect ratio uh, in a way that uh, might potentially, you know, simplify this a little bit. You know, maybe something like this, where it just brings you more to here. And now that I've cropped it like this, I think I like it better. As much as I like to keep things to the same aspect ratio because as i often say your images live with your other images and that's part of the story that you're telling that's your portfolio that's your body of work which isn't to say you can't have different shapes of course you can but i just want to plug in your brain the idea that uh sometimes having that consistency uh sort of keeps you in the movie when you're looking at a narrative of a set of pictures together but this one's very beautiful, um, as as are all the texture ones that we looked at previously. And then you, know, you see them together. Um, they work really well. So look, we look at photography and we say, you know, what do you want to say with your photography? What's important to you? Photography is not just capturing a literal depiction of what you point your camera at, of course. I mean, that's part of it, of course. But, you know, what you choose to reveal in the images that you share, um, you know, reveal a lot about kind of what's important to you, what you want to say about the world. It, real, it, it, it definitely reveals a lot about you as well, of course. And as an artist, if I could be so pretentious as we are with our cameras, um, you know, we're, we're, we're saying something, you know, by, by clicking that shutter, by, by pressing that shutter release and getting something that we think is worthy to share, uh, we're saying something, we're commenting on the world, um, and we're revealing something about ourselves. And this is obviously kind of a bunch of garbage spilled out on the ground and it's probably been there for a while but what does it say well it says something about someone who might have been there right i mean you see a shoe a toothbrush you know someone who spent an extended period of time maybe in that field you got all these caps for bottles and whatever um it's kind of beautiful in a lot of ways but it's also kind of sad in a lot of ways or at least that's what i bring to the photo um and you know, on its own. It's it's a real kind of mosaic. And when you sort of look at the patterns and the way your eyes are being kind of moved around, I think that the photographer did really well in choosing to sort of cut it off at the edges where it is and framing it and composing it in this way. You know, the the kind of main attraction, the the oil bottle, the 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 toothbrush, although it takes up very small portion of the frame is probably, you know, the focal point of this picture for me. And that has to do with kind of where it is. I love the fact that it's just on a bit of an angle. Um, but but when you look at sort of, you know, the the big gipper, if you will, you've got the you've got the oil thing, you've got the yellow can, you've got the shoe, and then you've got the the uh, toothbrush. Those are sort of the the main things you see. And the rest are all just kind of peppering it with all this color. Um, so I thought it was very well done, you know, and again, um, you don't necessarily have to have any living thing in your images to 
create beautiful art or make a statement about the world. So I put this image uh, just after it because it transitions into something beyond just the very sort of close up textures that we're seeing. And uh, this image uh, I think is, is very successful. And unlike the others, um, there's a lot included in this picture. If you look at the other images, they're all very sort of close up images of these textures. Well, I think what makes this one really interesting as a study when you sort of compare it to or you contrast it with some of the others is, you know, let's just bring up these two, for example. Um, this image here is probably just maybe a small portion of this image. Yet in this image, it kind of sort of does the same thing. It shows a variety of different colors and textures and and then we've got even more because we've got this old bus and it's not an old abandoned bus. It's a working bus because we've got people in it. And look at these reflections in there. It reminds me a lot of the sort of Robert Frank New Orleans trolley image where these beautiful reflections um, add to the image. Um, and there's almost a kind of trapped feeling in this particular guy. And he is kind of the main guy in there. So, I mean, this picture needs to be of a certain size to be fully appreciated. Um, but it's it's just really, really nicely done. I would venture to say, having spent a lot of time in Cuba, it's probably in Cuba, maybe Havana. Um, but it really, um, it's a very sort of quiet, it almost feels like, you know, a solitary moment let that were almost like a painting where this this bus was just staying there and staying there for a very very long time um but this bus is what gives this image you know that extra star and a half as far as i'm concerned i mean you've got this great beautiful background and then you've got the bus that really matches it but then you've got the actual people in there and you have a lot of time to look around this image and reflect as to kind of what you're seeing in terms of the scene, the artwork, the crumblingness of it, the trappedness of it. Um, very well done. So this is beautiful, and so is this. You know, this is maybe a more traditional beauty that if you were sort of to show a picture of beauty, maybe this would be a more traditional example than the bus in Cuba. But having said that, um, you know, the beauty is found in everything. Um, you know, are, are, are both of these images kind of beautiful in their own way with the colors and so on? Um, yeah, some would argue yes. Now, we've seen a lot of sunsets, but this one in particular, I think, is very effective. Um, I love kind of the angle. Uh, where the sun is, it's definitely not central, and that really works. I love the the trees and the rays coming above this tree here. The colors are just beautiful, and how the purple of the rocks and the purple of the flowers match this magenta haze in the background. Um, I thought it was very well composed. You know, there's a little space up there, but I think that works, and it keeps everything together. It's... Uh, not a traditional landscape photo in the sense of, you know, again, evoking the idea of a postcard where everything is kind of where it should be. I think everything in this composition is where it should be, but it's also more dynamic because it's a little bit different. You know, the foreground, you know, I mean, you're, you're kind of hanging out on the right side of this frame. The left side of the frame, you know, has a lot of space and so on and so forth, which allows for the evocativeness of this scene but you're kind of uh and you know just from a i would never crop it this way but this is kind of where you hang out in this image um so it's a little bit of an untraditional composition but the softness of it the color of it um i thought i thought it was nailed and i thought you know it works really really well so kudos um to whoever it was that uh, took this photo I'm going to move this one over here since it's a little bit similar. Um, 
and this one too, you know, very, very nice. I love the reflection. I love the micro composition of the reflection here of this area here working really well. Um, you know, I, I do find that the white of the cloud there, because it's not completely finished and maybe the trees are a little cut off here, potentially, maybe I'd like to see a little bit more above to see the a little more white up there, maybe how these trees finish. Um, or, you know, maybe I can come down a little um, and just, you know, get rid of that and see how that looks. Um, you know, in some ways, I think it cleans it up for me and I think it works. But, uh, you know, similar to this one where you have this sort of softness prevailing throughout the landscape, I think to here, there's a softness and a color uh, that works really well in this image. And compositionally, I think it works beautifully as well. And, uh, you know, two very nice landscapes, probably by uh, different photographers, but uh, I think uh, the common factors that make them work, um, you know, are, are really nice. Now, these two images uh, are very much stylized, right? I mean, you know, the photographer took something real and stylize them in the sense that, first off, they're black and white or, or kind of a sepia tone, which is very uh, different from the color reality that we're always looking at. Um, but they're also very evocative and very soft and very beautiful. Um, you know, let's start with this one. I mean, you're seeing just part of what looks like a young girl's face in a very kind of uh, uh, ballerina type costume fairy tale costume it's got a definite um feeling to it a dreamlike quality to it uh that i think is effective um i don't know uh potentially um maybe if i came in a little on this side do we want as much stuff on the right uh, because you kind of want to stay in here and the fact that you can't see your eyes you know makes this kind of a fragment of and it looks like fairy dust here. This doesn't look like dust on the sensor to me. Uh, it's a very evocative image. Um, there's nothing really sharp in it, but it's not out of focus. Um, and it's interesting. And everyone's going to maybe take something different from it. It's a dream. Uh, and, and I think that uh, it works. Now, this one here, you know, really reminds me of if you go back and look at the fashion work of Irving Penn, for example, who, you know, shot a lot, did a lot of beautiful work in black and white. It's also a, a reminder how black and white can be so effective. But just to focus on the details and, you know, if you're in the fashion industry and you're a designer, you know, an image like this uh, might be very uh, appealing because it shows off a beautiful kind of detail and each of those little buttons, you know, feels like they're alive and they're dancing and, and, you know, the, the roundness of what probably is either a mannequin or uh, an actual human uh, woman, I would guess, but it doesn't have to be um, make this image really effective um, just to be the sort of Debbie Downer uh, pain in the butt critiquer just, you know, why not just leave a little bit extra here? Let's finish the button on the top. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it's those little things. Before you put this image, it's so perfect. Why not make it a little more perfect? The fact that I noticed it means, you know, I have to call it out. It's not going to take away from this image necessarily, but if you saw that and you agreed with me and the photographers out there, um, you know, maybe that's something... Uh, that they would think about. So you go from this image uh, to this image, and what do they have in common? Um, I think they have sort of sprinkling of buttons, but here we have sprinkling of birds. And it's funny how you can look at these two very different images, one in color, one in black and white, one of a dress and buttons, one of birds and the sun, but they kind of work together. And again, this is sort of the magic of photography. And if you're curating your wall or an exhibition or a book, uh, sometimes when it comes to sequencing, we're looking for things like that that will tie two images together and you know give the viewer some sort of a, 
little bit of a surprise and sort of shake them out of their complacency. And that can be very effective. Um, now, I don't think the colors are necessarily natural here, but I think that the photographers, it's the photographer's prerogative to do what they want to do. Um, and it's, it's very effective. I mean, I know from, you know, my images of birds, and I'm not really a bird photographer, that it's hard to capture, you know, more than a few birds because they're always going to be that one rogue bird where the, the the wings are just not working or they're just, you know, together and they overlap. And it's just, whereas in this image, I think the, the birds are all, um, their wingspans are all there. There's nothing um, really problematic. Uh, this bird is within the sun area, which makes it kind of interesting and, you know, the color is, is really, you know, kind of beautiful, maybe not realistic, but I can appreciate it. And there's a simplicity here. And again, you know, I guess if, uh, if my, if my title for this particular episode of, uh, the passionate critique is simplicity, then certainly, um, I think that, uh, a lot of the images that we've seen to now are, are very much, uh, fall under that category. So. We're going to uh, switch gears a little bit, and um, we're going to sort of see some images uh, where humans are involved. And, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of different images here. I don't know if we'll get to them all. And again, I apologize, as we often do, uh, if we don't get to everybody's pictures. And ultimately, we will. And, uh, you know, keep letting us know. Um, uh, if we overlooked or didn't get to yours, um, you know, I want to get back to everybody just just to make sure that uh, it's not uh, it's not done on purpose. But now we're moving in. You can see we've got some color work here. We've got some black and whites. Uh, you know, some kind of look similar, which might mean that you know potentially it's the same photographer because oftentimes you know we we have uh, a kind of a, a way of shooting. Um, that sometimes we don't even sort of see it ourselves because it's kind of an unconscious kind of a scenario. And, you know, I can look at these four images and say that, hmm, there is a possibility that this might be the same photographer, but it also um, could be four different photographers. Um, what I kind of love about these images is probably kind of what I love about this image. And that is, the idea that uh, there's a simplicity that's happening in these four images um, that really works. Um, you're getting, uh, it's black and white, but it's a very contrasty black and white. There's not a lot of tonal values in most of these images. It's either very light or very dark or black. Um, what I do love about when you have very dark objects or silhouettes is that you can see the shape of the people, the individuals in these photos. And I think that's uh, really important. Um, and, and I think that is part of the success of these images. Um, so let's start with this one. So this one might be sort of the least silhouette if you will, of the group, um, mainly because you've got sort of this uh, foreground, middle ground, and background. But I love the fact that you've got this sort of three uh, uh, layered uh, uh, dimensional uh, thing in, in these pictures. Um, just give me a second. OK, as I mentioned to Danny, uh, my son Sawyer's home with strep throats, and I knew he would come in. So far, so good. Um, so yeah, there's this three-dimensionality of this image, and it looks like, you know, getting off a plane, but it's sort of entering into sort of the Jetson zone into, I don't know, it just looks very kind of surreal, and, and that's what makes it interesting. Images that ask questions often are images that um, are more interesting, um, and I think this one sort of falls in this too, Arrivals TWA, Wow, TB, it almost has this quality of, yeah, it's this very surreal quality. And I think that this has to be the same photographer. Um, but, and maybe all three are. And maybe they're all in, a, in an airport, uh, potentially. Hang on, 
Let me just bring these two together. That's what I wanted to do. Um, you know, very powerful. And again, you know, you kind of want to see more um, of this photographer's work. Uh, the picture on the right, again, very simplistic, you know, very surreal. Uh, the, the silhouette of the figure there, really just beautifully decisive moment. The legs are there. It's working really well. Um, this image fits really well with the others. Um, you can see here, um, it's probably maybe the same airport. I don't know. Um, but it's beautifully seen. And I think that though the reality of this scene might be a lot brighter, the photographer's idea and vision was to kind of darken it. And it's okay to have areas of dark with no detail. Um, I think what particularly makes it work is the fact that the silhouette is, is really kind of beautifully shaped and contrasted with the light behind. I love the lines. I love the clock. Even these lights here. There's room to breathe. It's very effective. It's great. This one here, too. Um, I love this moment. Um, I love how all these figures, it looks like mist is coming up on a hot day. And, you know, this figure here is sort of the main event. And she's beautifully um, silhouetted against the steamy uh, water that's coming up. And then you've got this person sort of leading in. And you've got other arms out there because that's what you do when the water is sort of coming up. And the way the image is enhanced and treated is very effective. And I think that if all these images are by the same photographer, then the photographer is doing really well. They've got kind of a vision in different places. Um, the commonality, of course, you know, maybe airports, travel, time, the globe. I mean, they connect and they connect on so many different levels. And uh, I think you know, in images that sort of ask questions and don't necessarily reveal all the answers or all the detail uh, can be very evocative and get your imagination going. And I particularly like them. Um, maybe you do, maybe not as much as me. And now we'll talk a little bit about some people shots. And uh, let me just see which ones we've got here. Okay, all these images... Um, <clears throat> are people oriented, you know, obviously the uh, saxophonist with the eyes, very evocative, the focus is on the instrument, but the eyes are very powerful. And as is often the case, you know, the eyes are very uh, communicative, particularly when they're looking right at you. And there's something about, you know, a human being being stared at that, you know, our spidey senses are there. And we're aware of it and we can feel it even when, you know, we didn't see it. We can just sort of feel it. And that's a bit of the magic of, you know, being human. And it also overlaps with the magic of photography. So I think, you know, the eye contact can be very powerful, as too can when the eyes are not looking straight at you. So these three images, um, very different, but also I think... Um, work well under the theme of today's uh, critique, which is simplify. Um, this, I think, is a very effective, interesting scenario, interesting way to photograph. I don't know if I ever would have thought of, you know, photographing a close-up like this of the instrument and then those eyes kind of behind it. And I don't know. What do you think? I kind of like it. I think it's working. Um, again, it's very evocative. Um, if, if this was the image, you know, of this person, you know, maybe you'd want more than that. Maybe you'd want to see more of them. Um, it could be an interesting album cover. Uh, I, I think that, uh, it works maybe just moving slightly. So there's a little more room for this side. There's plenty of room for this side, but if a slight movement to just finish the oval here, and have this just right between the eyes, you know, might be something I would say to potentially improve it. But it's not a deal breaker because I think it works. Um, and I think it's it's very effective and surprising. These images where you're looking kind of right at uh, the subject. 
and they're, you're making contact. Um, very simple. Uh, there's, there's, there's no, um, <clears throat> very simple and powerful, right? You've got the background is completely out of focus. It looks like maybe a school classroom. You've got the body language of a little girl who might be a little uncomfortable. So her hand is sort of covering her face. You've got the beautiful eyes and you've got the beautiful sort of hair and pigtails behind, but it's the eyes, you know, and the eyes are, are very, very powerful in this and the black and white works, you know, having catch lights is always good. Um, otherwise the eyes, you know, don't really feel like they're alive. There's not a lot of reflection in there, but there's enough catch lights to just, you know, keep, keep this little girl's gaze alive because it's a very sort of calm gaze and a very simple image. Uh, not a lot to, to say about it. Whereas this one here, there's a lot more going on because there's more people in it and more kids in it. And you've got like two of the kids kind of uh, looking at you, but they're all kind of aware that their picture is being taken. And it's just kind of a fun thing. And I think it works. You know, Saved by the Bell, you just got her in a little bit. It's a little tight on the, the end there, maybe a little more on that, maybe not cutting off the long nail, um, but it's not a deal breaker because she's sort of the main uh, uh, star of this image and, you know, just beautiful. You can see the texture of the skin. Uh, it's a, a very nice uh, image of, you know, maybe when you're traveling and you encounter, uh, you know, these beautiful children from different cultures and you've got a nice connection uh, and it works, you know, really well. So what do these four images have in common? Again, there's a simplicity there because you can kind of go right to the people. Uh, none of them is looking at the camera. And oftentimes I say to my students on my workshops, when we're encountering people and we want to do a portrait, yeah, get them looking right at you. It's beautiful. Make that connection. And that connection transfers to the viewer of the photo when they see it. But also sometimes when they're looking away or off camera, it feels kind of more evocative and, you know, there's more, you know, imagination required when the viewer of the image um, looks at the picture. So we have two, two color images and two black and white images. Let's look at the color ones first. Um, I think that, uh, you know, both these images work. Um, perhaps, you know, it's a little more... Um, uh, sort of snapshot aesthetic, the one on the left. Uh, but it's a nice isolation, simple background, uh, the focus on the little girl maybe could be lightened up a little bit. You know what I said about the idea of uh, the having some sort of catch lights, the eyes don't appear to have a lot of catch lights there. They're probably there. They just need to be brought out a little bit more. I would lighten her face a little bit just so it pops a little more so you can see it. Um, this picture I like because, again, it's a little girl maybe in thought and you can sort of see it's evocative and you can see it's a snowy day, beautiful eyelashes and the hair um, and the sort of softness of the, uh, either it's manipulated in some way to soften the background to keep your focus here or maybe it's just selective focus that's working. Um, but it, it works um, really well. And then we have these two images in black and white uh, that I think are, are very evocative. And again, they're enhanced in such a way where there's certainly a strong vignette. And we can always argue, I know Derek likes to um, talk a little bit about, you know, the enhancement as to, you know, maybe it's too far or too, there's a lot we can do and it's up to you to sort of figure that out. Um, I generally like to sort of err on the side of not going too far where you can sort of see it. But the idea of this beautiful sort of dark area highlighting and contrasting with the the image and, you know, in looking at this one, um, it looks like it's that same Cuban background that we saw the bus shot earlier, only a very different shot of a person. Um, <clears throat> this one's in black and white. Uh, this is a very evocative, very beautiful image. You can see the texture of the skin. Uh, you know, it's very dramatic in the enhancement, maybe a little too much. Maybe we can, you know, lighten up some of those shadows. But again, that's in the eye of the artist that wants to, you know, bring this along. And it still delivers. Uh, maybe like to see a little more detail, you know, in the eyes a little bit. Um, but I think 
you know, it's very successful in that, you know, the mood of what appears to be a dance. And I know it's, it's a still life and a close up, but I, I, it feels like it's part of a dance and, and, but it's the still life that communicates so much more. And again, that's the magic of photography. There's nothing, um, you know, it, it's beautifully cropped. It's beautifully included. I wouldn't sort of do anything else in terms of the composition and the moment is there. And you kind of wonder about it and you go into your own world, maybe a little bit like this. You want to guess what's going on in this guy's mind. Um, and you definitely have all the clues here, you know, the old car, the background, uh, the contrast between the sharp and the out of focus uh, is very, very powerful. Um, you know, the even the, the detail on the clothes is very nice. And the fact is, you know, oftentimes <clears throat> I'm a little bit, and you've heard me say before, you know, words, you're always going to read them. Um, but in this instance, the guess, which is a trademark for a clothing line, it still works. And it's very kind of, you know, small. Um, two plus two equals five. That is, I think, an equation that's happening by an artist in Cuba. Maybe you guys know more than I do about it, but it's interesting. Um, and then you have this sort of uh, juxtaposition beyond what looks like a scary devil face. And then this guy here. So again, it's a very evocative image. Um, you know, treated in a very powerful and contrasty way. Uh, is it too much? Well, you know, you you tell me. I mean, for me, it works. Um, uh, I probably wouldn't make it quite as dramatic as that, but you know, in terms of what the photographer's doing, um, I think it I think it works. So, guys, I think that um, I'm going to uh, cut things off here. We have a lot more to get to. Derek couldn't make it. Uh, my son is uh, sick with strep and uh, I'm going to go deal with him. And poor Derek is sick with the flu. It's going around. Maybe wear a mask, wash your hands for 20 seconds. Isn't that what they used to tell us? And I just wanted to thank you guys uh, for continuing to, to send in these great inspiring images that we can talk about. I'd like to thank Lassie, our sponsor. They've been really good to us. Um, I can look around my desk area here. I've got a lot of hard drives. I mean, this is it. This is where our images live. And regardless of whoever your hard drives are made by, make sure you have two of them because, you know, it's redundant backup that's going to save the day. And then lastly, uh, because B&H and Danny let me um, I just wanted to say photoeducate.com. That's where the workshops are. We're going around the world. <clears throat> going to be in Japan the end of the month, Milan uh, the following month. And then we have a very special United Nations New York City workshop coming up in May in the spring. And, you know, what better time is there uh, than that to photograph um, in New York City? So simplify, but get out there and make images. And uh, I'll leave you with that. And I'll look forward uh, to seeing you and hopefully Derek uh, next time around when we come back to the Passionate Photographer Critique. Get out there and shoot. It looks like a beautiful day.